welcome to Anna's Bottom Line here, and today I will be showing you my really nice fishing rod here, how to tie a knot here for our freshly water shipping, and this is going to be part one of the series of Fishing Upstate New York. I'm going to show you some fresh water hooks, some salt water hooks, some weight protection I use, some buoys, fluffy people I call them, they are used with bait, and of course some more fresh water hooks. And guys, um, I'm going to be showing my directions on all of this, and so let's start out with my fishing rod. This is a very nice fishing rod called the Jindal. It's meant for bells, it throws really far, and it's the perfect rod I bought for my local dealer for $35. As pros use it, they put the end part right here on the side, near your thigh. They're, they grab the rod just like this, they walk it in, they put it here, they throw their least this point, letting it fall, and then they snap this back. That's how you start off with this. Now, I bought this line, you might need some extra, which in case if you just have another fishing rod you want to do it on, um, that's fine. But now, we're going to start off by showing you my hooks. Right now, these are special salt water hooks made to catch a special fish. Now, we cut these off. The end of my line is full of an ion, and here we go. Now what I'm going to do is detach my buoy, and I suggest that all you people use a 1LB bully. Bu Wait. My mistake, it's a 1 ounce weight. It's pretty heavy, it'll sink your line right down into it. That's why you have a buoy too, to stop it from sinking. Now that I have your 1 ounce weight here, all you're going to need is your hooks, an attachable place to put your um, weight on, and nothing else on these hooks, only the plain hooks with your plain line. Now that it's ready, we're going to have a line over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the end of our fishing rod, and we are going to start our knotting process. This loop is a special knot. For this case, we're going to allow it to breathe lots of line. So you're going to just keep your rod open like that. Take your line, put it through all your circles here until you're done. Now that all your circles are done and you have a decent amount of line, you can snap this back, holding it down, and you're going to lower this so you have more room to work on. Once this is nice and stable, making sure it won't fall, you're going to grab your line. If it falls through your hooks, replace it. It's a common error here. So you're just going to put them through all the way. It's nice and set now, so nothing, nothing's going to do here. Now that you have your extra spare line here, You're going to lay it down on a nice surface, making sure it doesn't go back. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a loop. So as you have flat on the table here, we're going to make a nice loop. A good, a good loop here. Needs to be a perfect loop. See, we have a nice good loop here. Now, what you're going to do with this end is you're going to take your um, hook, and you're going to place one of the, while keeping your loop steady, you're going to take your um, area where your hooks are, and you're going to slide the bounder in so the line fits through. Now that you have that there, what you're going to do is take this back and follow it through here. Pull it nice and tight, you guys, and if you just pull, the more you start. Again, you take it, put it through here, right here, where there's a where there's a nice gap opening for it, and you're going not to pull, but you're going to wrap around four to five times. I see my little 
trouble here? It's all because the loop is the trickiest part here. Once you've made the loop, right, and you're all ready and you have been following along, once you finally have it ready, lock it onto your string, you're going to put it through. And as you see my loop is right here, you're going to take your end of your line right here, are going to wrap it around it around four to five times, like I said earlier. One, two, three, four. Okay, now that that's all lined up, what we're going to do is we're going to take this line and wrap it around once. One time, two times, and then, now that you've wrapped it two times, you are going to take your string and pull. Nice and tight. Really tight, guys. If you have a um, yarn string or a rope string, I suggest you put mucus or water on it. Nice and tightening it really hard. Now what you're going to do, you're going to take your nice um, scissors, knife, have a dog supervision, and you're going to leave enough room so if the knot has to slip around while fighting fish, it will be able to. Make sure guys, leave it some nice room for slip out. As you see, I've tr I'm trimming it here now because otherwise the knife will be coming now as you see, I have my knot done so far, and it has still a trim. Now that this knot's done, we are going to move on to the next task, adjusting our weight onto it. For those of you who are just starting, I suggest a one ounce weight, and only a one ounce weight, due to that it's heavy, and it's just enough to lower your line down into the water. When using a one ounce weight, and you're in sea fishing, do not use a buoy. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ends right here. If you have one of the ones that I have like mine, you're going to have a, um, like a slip on clip on I call it. First it's going to look like this. Just nice and clean as silver with two hooks coming around it. Ignore the line here from your knot. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take the longer on the slip on, you're going to pop it down and pull to the side. So one more time, you're going to pop it down and pull out. So pop and pull. Now that that's open, you're going to take your one ounce weight, you're going to slip it on here, you're going to clink it on, right? Once it's nice and down below so it doesn't screw you up and you're putting it back on. It needs to be nice and low. This one at length will stay attached as long as this hook stays on. So now you're going to go pop back on there. Now the way it seals off from exiting. And still, it has nice room to move. This right here concludes how to tie it off here, adjust your weight to it, add your hooks, and that's really it guys for the seawater hooks. Now you have all you are going to do is the same thing with the um, freshwater hooks, but instead of wrapping the wire around one of these, you are going to take your wire and put it through this tiny hole that you see right here. And for this one, you don't need any type of weight because um, it's sparkly and fish usually are attracted to the top. You have three hooks here, so watch out. And I suggest for water fishing, uh, fresh water fishing, use a buoy. This buoy doesn't have to be big, a nice small one. Here. Now that that's done, it looks like we're all set here. All you have to do is same thing, just tie it to this one little knot. It's nice and sparkly, fish will catch on by itself. That's the fresh water. We have some mini just baiters here. And that's really it guys.
guys, there's a lot of ways tying it up. That's my easiest one, as you saw there. And guys, here we are. I'm doing another video on all this one line. I'm going to double pound you. Three, two, one.